Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, Dopa for short. This is a place where we we'll make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that will drop. Now let's get started. So now we're dealing with the part two of the transport of respiratory gases. The second one being carbon dioxide now from the previous the part one you already understand the principle so we're just gonna go straight into it very easy stuff so now carbon dioxide is coming from the tissues okay the transport is opposite that of oxygen from tissues to the alveoli where to be expelled all right they are produced in the tissues as a result of the uh, metabolism of organic nutrients all right so now what happens is that the partial pressure of co2 you have to consider it at the tissues where it's just coming from very high it's at 46 millimeters of mercury okay then the arterial blood that is supplying those tissues is carrying oxygenated blood, oxygen rich blood. Do you understand that now? And it's also carrying, there's also carbon dioxide in that blood. But the arterial blood has just 40 millimeters of mercury. So there's a pressure gradient of 6. Okay? Tissue, so it favors from moving from tissues into that blood. So that's that's what that's what happens. But you wonder why it's just six? Why that of oxygen needed to be over 54 difference? There's something I told you in the lecture on gaseous exchange. If you have not watched, go and watch it. Very important. Okay, talk about respiratory membrane. Is that there's something called the dive diffusion capacity when we talk about the fixed law gas laws diffusion capacity that of oxygen is 21 mils okay diffusion capacity has to do with how much okay of those gases can diffuse based on fixed law you, you, do you understand that go back to it per minute per millimeter of mercury 21 this is the efficient capacity of why that of co2 is 400 400 mil per minute per millimeters of mercury 20 times so that's why this one can just be having pressure gradient of six difference but yet it can diffuse as much as oxygen so that pressure gradient of oxygen is why it's making up for this little diffusion capacity that oxygen has i get it i get, I get in it now so this, this is what happens it's just pressure gradient of six you need to know that so it favors movement from tissues into the blood okay at the capillaries, tissue capillaries. The other one is pulmonary capillaries, the tissue capillaries, you mentioned that. So it enters the blood now and then it's now being transported to the lungs where to be expelled. Now, the next thing, transporting the blood, in what form? In what forms does blood transport carbon dioxide, okay? Three, there are three forms. Or like oxygen, oxygen is in two forms. Okay, this is what I'm saying. Three forms. So let's 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 mention them. Number one, like oxygen dissolved form. So both oxygen and carbon dioxide, they are not very soluble in water. The blood is made up of a lot of water. Okay, so in this form, it's just seven percent. Oxygen is three percent, so this one is, is a little more soluble. Seven percent is carried in that CO two form. This is that form. Then the next form in which it is carried is bicarbonate. Bicarbonate, bicarbonate form, and sixty three percent of it is carried in this form. Why? Look at what happens. Now, CO2. 
okay, will move into the red blood cells. The blood is made. That's why the blood is red. A lot of red blood cells. They easily to move into the red blood cells. And the red blood cells, they have, why it's moving there? Okay, they have an enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Okay, carbon is an enzyme. It catalyzes the reaction CO2 plus water to now give you carbon, uh, carbonic acid. Okay, then this carbonic acid now dissociates into bicarbonate plus hydrogen ion. Are you, are you, are you seeing it now? Catalyzed by carbonic anhydrase. Without it, it's, it, it that this reaction is very slow, doesn't happen so much. But it, a lot of this enzyme is in the red blood cell, so it goes there and is converted to bicarbonate in the red blood cells, and then it diffuses out. This one diffuses out of the red blood cells and goes back into the blood. So the purpose of going there is just so it can be converted to this form. Sixty-three percent of it is done. So there's something called chloride shift in the sense that as this one is going out of the red blood cells in order to replace the, this electrolyte so that they will not be in balance and this electronegativity chloride ions will now go into the red blood cells to replace it and that phenomenon is known as chloride shift also known as hamburger hamburger phenomenon phenomenon okay chloride shifts so you just you just you just need to know that so that's what happens okay a lot of it is transported in this in this form by carbon then the final form just similar to oxygen also is the carbamino form carbamino carbamino form this carbamino form, of course, 70, so it's just it's 30% of it. This carbamino form is actually the form that binds to hemoglobin. So it's not only oxygen that binds to hemoglobin. Hemoglobin also transports, but it's just 30. Why in oxygen is 97%. Okay, but in this case, it's just 30% of it. But it's still significant, 30%. Okay? So 30% of it is bound to hemoglobin and is transported to the lungs then the next thing now i want to now talk about is how does it now offload itself okay and it's expelled there's another effect that is like the opposite no talk about balls effect okay balls effect in oxygen transport there's another one called how days effect we're going to be explaining that after this break so don't go anywhere after this break All right, you're welcome back. Now, I want to now talk about what happens when carbon dioxide is now offloaded in the alveoli and it's expired, okay? So, there's something you need to, we are said to talk about. It's called Haldane. The Haldane effect. It's opposite of Bose effect. No Bose effect has to do with oxygen being offloaded from hemoglobin when it gets to a place where it is high carbon dioxide is high that's in the tissues now the opposite happens it's talking about the offloading of what this this carbon dioxide that is attached to hemoglobin just 30 percent of it how it is offloaded the behavior and it's similar when it gets to the the lungs okay where oxygen is high oxygen now binds to hemoglobin and displaces carbon dioxide and then it is expired but this is just 30 percent that is displacing okay it's this 30 percent of it is what is happening in this Haldane effect the displacement of co2 by oxygen in the lungs do you understand that now that is what you didn't then the next thing now 
you, you still have 63 percent that needs to go out you know this dissolve form just dissolve now it just diffuses but this one is bound to something that's why you need to understand it so the album effect has told us why this one will be displaced it's bound loosely co2 oxygen display but this one now by coming from how is it now converted to co2 not in bicarbonate is <laughs> it's not what is expired now you understand that so the same oxygen that is binding to hemoglobin high concentration in the in, in, in the lungs makes hemoglobin a stronger acid hemoglobin is a buffer do you understand that now so hemoglobin becomes a stronger acid because of the binding of oxygen so what happens now you know acids they release hydrogen ions the stronger the acid the more it can release hydrogen ions, can give hydrogen ions okay so it has become a stronger acid so it's now giving off more hydrogen ions look at it so as it's giving out more hydrogen ions it is now combining more with bicarbonate so this reaction is now reversed this thing can go in both ways okay so it now forms carbonic acid there then carbonic acid is very unstable it easily dissociates it now dissociates to co2 and water this one now escapes and enters the alveoli and it's expired so you see you see what happens so this is the transport of carbon dioxide from the tissues in these forms and when it gets to the lungs this is what happens how then effect carbamino form displaces it then this one strong acid by the binding of oxygen also then it enables this to convert back to co2 and that is what you need to know all right the details are in the book but it's very easy stuff all right so i'm going to see you in the next video